Okay, hello there, commanders, and welcome back to National Cup. We are in the finals between Russia and Ukraine. Both teams almost undefeated so far throughout the tournament. The only loss that Russian team has suffered here, blue team, was to the Chinese team during the group stage. That was a tie 1-1. One -one. And the only loss that the Ukraine team has suffered was to the Russian team itself during the group stages as well. Russia won 2-0, but both of these battles were very, very close. Uh, Ukraine was very heavily winning one of them, but in the end got capped at the very, very end of the battle. I highly recommend to see those if you haven't done that yet. Although I guess I just spoil them, but nonetheless, it's a really great show and great battles to watch. So, Russians, blue team over here, rushing for the forest. Ukraine team, red team, trying to respond in kind. I think their forces might be actually slightly bigger over here in the forest, so they'll be looking to gain advantage from that. And here on the top, Russians do have slight advantage, repeating crossbows versus repeating crossbows. And the Russians have opted for double range setup, while the Ukrainians have only went with single range setup. But repeating crossbows versus repeating crossbow duel here um, on the top. Pikes versus Pikes as well, and the fighting in the forest has also broken out. It's just huge line of infantry versus huge line of infantry, supported by some uh, Russian archers over here that are being pushed away by uh, Ukrainian infantry. Ukrainians are also trying to push through here on the flank, trying to find some flanks and route the units, but it's Hannibal who have access to the termination is going to be very hard to route him. But the flanks of uh, Foxen almost, almost, oh, there we go, minus six, <laughs> two. Cannot decide whether they want to be routed or not, but there we go, now they're going to be routed, nuked and cut down very quickly and that opens a possibility for Ukrainians to find more and more flanks, but holes in their own lines have also been opened. But they should be able to surround here and mop up the Russian infantry forces, so advantage to the Ukrainian team over there in the forest. But the Russians are responding in kind on top of the hill. They're winning the range duel. The pikes have also, well, sort of disappeared from both sides. Although the Russians are over here chasing. Somebody let me see on the uh, composition. They do have two pike units, both still alive. I don't see the other one though. Oh, see, yeah, also almost dead. Well, Ukrainians are forced to retreat and these almost wide open with just barely any units defending it. See, also seems wide open and up for Russians uh, to be taken, which looks like that is their next move. Ukrainians are heavily, heavily pushing into the forest. Not only they have ma um, massive number advantage, they also have the advantage of not having any ranged units on this flank. So the melee infantry advantage, the actual advantage is very very heavily in favor of the Ukrainians. Ukrainians are also putting two units of infantry on top of C just ahead of it opening but is that going to be enough? Can they actually make it in time inside? They should be able to no problem. They have two units versus just one so it is unable to stop them ahead of the point and C is going to be contested as soon as it unlocks and D is contested by the Russians but uh, Ukrainians did manage to heal up over there and as they will be retreating they will be able to reinforce their defense of the Russians do not intend to let go and they are trying to drive their pressure uh, home and capture the be already contested by Ukrainians and they, it's just being flooded by the Ukrainian infantry looks very good the archers may do some damage but they are not going to stop that point from being captured what could though are reinforcements that are being denied from the healing zone so nothing is going to come and point b should be ukrainian anytime soon once those spearmen and now charging in cavalry will rout and die off is being used which is slightly too late not denying the off of perseverance usage and C is contested by the Ukrainians. Instead of pushing D, they see that, okay, Ukrainians have respawned, healed up. We need to respect that instead. Try to get C, which none of the teams have any uh, healing zones nearby. That may very soon change as the Ukrainians are going to get a healing zone over here on the beach on B. But that's not going to be close either. There we go. One. There we go. This last unit has been cut down and Ukrainians are going to take B, securing themselves an advantage. They're already 100 points ahead because they contested points for longer. Well, they are even capturing B now, right? And D was only contested for a little while. But Russians are very, very heavily poised to capture C. 
the unit of glaives from the Ukrainians now routes, but they do manage to get Scipio cavalry on top of it. Can oath and buy some time for the Ukrainians to heal up over here on the beach uh, of the healing zone provided by B, and then rush and reinforce C. But I don't think that cavalry can buy that much time and C should fall into the Russian hands. But even if it does, it is still free to do advantage to Ukraine and they're still not letting go. They are, uh, they have pikes incoming. They will be blocked by repeating crossbows out of all units, but it works as any other. Just prevents them from getting on, forces them to use pike phalanx because if they don't, they will just walk into a shit ton of infantry ready to embrace them without a pike phalanx on. And now as the last Ukrainian unit is getting cut down on C, C is going to be secured by the Russian team. Ukrainians do have the repeating crosses over here, able to do a lot of damage to the Russian infantry, but they will also be forced to run away by the pipe pressure. Three units of Foxmen from the Russian team are rushing straight to D, and only one unit of spearmen are ready to take them on. It is Lonida, so it will be very difficult to route, but the Russians also have their Scipio cavalry incoming, able to provide a war cry and counter uh, hold the line of Lonidas. Foxmen will struggle to find a flank, but they're using the cliff positioning to sweep, basically make past all the entire unit and be able to apply a flank. They need two flanks plus war cry in order to rally the leaders, and one of those flanks would need to be a re flank, which is at the moment not working. But hold the line has already been used, so once it expires, it will be a possibility. Actually, no, it is not two left flanks, uh, sorry, two side flanks is enough actually, because those are Foxmen after all. So, there we go, Warcry is used, and despite hold the line, unit is routed, and D is now being captured by the Russians. They have still three units on top of it, three melee units, um, infantry units, that can stop any incoming Ukrainian reinforcements. And if the Ukrainians lose D, that has now been flipped, doesn't look like they will be able to get on top of it either, unless this uh, Hasdrubal player could push through and get on top of D, but that's just not going to happen. Uh, Foxmen have most likely access to hamstring as well and there we go D is Russian so now Russians are in a great great position they're 300 points behind but that is not going to be for long the battle has just started and they have secured themselves three points out of five and they're all very nicely positioned on top of the hill the healing zone here provided by D is much closer to C than the healing zone on the beach provider provided by B so the Ukrainians need to try to gather some momentum and get C, maybe get back D, or try to capture the base. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for them to win because their position is simply simply at a huge disadvantage. You, uh, Russians here making the correct choice of going for the hill, committing to that, and letting the forest go. Although, from the looks of it, they didn't maybe really plan on it, but since, you know, both teams had more or less equal spread of forces around the map, but that's how it ended up happening. So Russians definitely uh, getting the better end of the trade as the Ukrainians failed to defend D. And well, now they're being slowly cut down over here. They are trying to push towards the healing zone, but I don't really see them achieving anything over here. So they're running back to the forest, to the beach, trying to regain control over their healing zone. They should be able to do so sooner or later. Provided that, well, they can also spawn units on top of there. And once triple units spawn, for example, then it should be all right. D is going to be contested now, even captured for a while somehow. But those pieces are not really going to take it. But they do have reinforcements incoming. Six melee units making its way over there. But the Russians also have the healing zone over here. They can very easily bring reinforcements of their own. And then as the Skipper Cavalry charges in, probably has Warcry ready, and that Warcry should make short work of these Spearmen. Although, not enough to route this one, needs one more flank. And this one doesn't have any flanks, but the infantry is incoming, and the units are also very low on units, or other soldiers. So once they drop below 10, they are going to disappear. And they is now under control of the Russians again. Pikes have been stopped ahead of the point, but they cannot really stop the pikes with anything that they have themselves. Their pikes are running back to the healing zone and their pikes will be able to, for to face the Ukrainian pikes, of course. And now Russians are actually trying to launch an attack over and beat. That may be 
uh, opportunity for the Ukrainian team to launch themselves back into battle because if the Russians commit too heavily to be a counter-attack is very much possible for the Ukrainian team. So I think this is a mistake by the Russian team. Maybe they just feel overconfident. And at the moment they kind of have um, all the right to be. But I think that is very, very risky and may as well lose them. So Ukrainians are establishing the control over the huge Russian reinforcements incoming, but Ukrainians have their own pike phalanx ready to stop those reinforcements in place, at least for long enough for all the infantry uh, to clear the remaining Russian forces on top of the only one in the remaining being now shot down by the repeating crossbows. 25 soldiers, 20, they just need to drop below 10 and then they're gone. And then Ukrainians should be able to hold on to D as long as those pikemen are not going to make it through. The repeating crosses are also there to make sure that isn't the case. But those uh, spearmen refuse to route. Now they route, but the pikemen have gotten on, but they're not in pike phalanx. Shield bash is being used, but it's not good enough. Foxmen still on top of the point as well, just made it. So the Ukrainians need to work a little bit extra to uh, keep control of D, rather take control over D. Both units barely alive, lower than 10 soldiers, so very easy to round. All you need is just one flank, although hold the line is used. And now Skipper Cavalry may make it through and it may even charge the repeating crossbows. The repeating crossbows dodge, barely got scratched, but that is still going to be an oft cavalry on top of it. But all for not, it doesn't increase missile block or armor, it is going to be cut down as well. Foxman run away, but a full unit of Sula infantry is coming to D as well. The Russians desperately, desperately holding on to D. The repeating crossbows are really working 24 7, trying to get control over it. And now Russians are being pushed back towards C, but as they're being pushed back into their healing zone, that is going to be uh, to make it very easy for them to keep healing up. Uh, the Ukrainians don't have a single range unit over here, they don't even have cavalry reinforcements to deny the healing zone. They're trying to push through with their Foxmen, but they ultimately fail. Uh, to get on top of the crosswoman and the crosswoman will run away after healing. C is contested though and D is now being captured and as I said that another unit of Scipio cavalry makes it through and now Ukrainians have a huge problem of six infantry units incoming. That healing zone is really paying back for the Russian team while the Ukrainians if they want to have any reinforcements they have to make it all the way from the base which is what they're doing but it's a much much longer trip and that is going to ultimately, most likely, keep D under Russian control. As now they're just pulling through most brute force tactic. Just look at all those buffs on that Hannibal. Just blobbing up, pushing through. But well, it works. So, the Russians are going to literally push out with brute force the Ukrainians out of D. And they're going to hold on to all three points that they hold. But... Two of them are now being contested, which means less point gain uh, to the Russian team, despite holding more points. That is still pretty good for Ukraine, and the points are pretty much dead even, only 30 points of difference. But, as we go later and later into the game, the Ukrainians are the ones that need to keep attacking, need to keep contesting. And with that, they're fighting close to Russian uh, healing zones, which gives advantage to Russians. And that advantage is only going to grow and grow. So the Russians, uh, so the Ukrainians, really need to find a way back into the game. I think their possibility, their opportunity was to take D. If they managed to get that, they were very, very close. But every single time they almost got it, another unit charged in, literally last second, snuck through the holes in the Ukrainian defense, and managed to get it over the point and the cavalry enough. Bought enough time, and Foxman bought enough time, then Swords bought enough time, and then a blob of infantry arrived, and there went the entire Ukrainian advance. Now they're mounting something um, of a new attack, but Russians are this time are going to definitely be ready to take them on. They do have their pikes, only one unit though, supported by the repeating crosses, they're still pretty healthy. They haven't really suffered much damage apart from that one charge. So 20 soldiers lost, so still pretty much full uh, health and power. But those archers definitely do hurt the Ukrainian Foxman. It was the worst matchup as 
the Folksmen have the lowest armor in the game, maybe apart from the dogs, I don't actually know, but doesn't really matter, both of them dive extremely, extremely quickly to all the archers. So Russians uh, do exert quite a strong control over the sea area. Their archers now are rank 3 compared to Russian, uh, so the Ukrainian infantry that is mostly uh, rank 1, rank 2, no rank 3 over there. So as that XP advantage for the Russian archers grows, it will be more and more difficult for the Ukrainians to make it through. And actually, I just remember something, I should have pressed this button to make my field of view a little bit larger. Um, well, I am recording that after a bit of a break, so there we go, I wanted to deliver the finals the way they should be, and there we go, I fail. The Ukrainians could now put the pikes on top of the D point, but for some reason they don't, and now they're going to be stopped by the Russian pikes, so pikes versus pikes, repeating crossbows, repeating cross, but the Russian repeating crossbows have XP advantage now, which is definitely going to help them. But the repeating crosses from the Ukrainians have slight terrain advantage to help them trade a little bit better. Now the XP is actually equalized as they just leveled up, I think. But that is a little bit too little too late and the pressure from the pikes forces them to pull back while Russian repeating crosses can still shoot. And now they will score some re shots and that is going to be over for the Ukrainian advance. They have spears and swords pushing from below. But once the repeating crossbows will be able to turn around and shoot them, they'll also be gone in mere seconds. Ukrainians are trying to mount another attack on C. They almost got their units on top of it, but the access to the healing zone is very largely denied. But they do have their Folksmen over here that may be able to try to get a charge on, but even then, both of those units should be able to stop them in the front lines and not are able to let them get on top of the actual healing point. Yeah, the Russian archers definitely do help over here as the Ukrainians don't really have any answer to that. The Ukrainians have brought only two units of cavalry as opposed to oh, only three for Russians. Uh, so it's actually not that big of a deal, but there's no advantage. So it's very difficult for the Ukrainian cavalry to find any gaps, any openings in the Russian formation, even if they have fewer melee units, melee infantry units. And now they need to save their own infantry from the incoming uh, Russian cavalry in order to not lose units and let them heal up. But as I said, every time the Ukrainians try to attack on sea, they're going to do it with more and more sacrifices. And now, as they're no longer ahead in points, those sacrifices are simply not going to be enough. They really need to take a point. But what will it be? Will it be C? Will it be D? Or will they just not take anything? They do have some spearmen sneaking over there that could possibly deny the healing zone, but the pikes are there ready to take them on. And now they are going to retreat all the way back to the base. So does the cavalry from the Russians for whatever reason. Oh, that's the reason. I get it. I didn't see that. Good thing that the Russians did. Then again, they have 10 players that can see that. Uh, but then again, it's not a very significant attack and yep, can be very easily stopped. But that means no cavalry on the front lines for the Russian teams and means one unit of cavalry for the Ukrainians. But can it really achieve anything? Where is it even? It's over here on B, almost dead, dying to pikes. Ooh, almost routed. Almost, 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 but managed to drop the flank just in time. And now the Ukrainians are trying to find another attack onto D. They have uh, came to a conclusion that attacking D is easier than attacking C. And I think I agree with them because C has a healing zone over here and a healing zone over here. Two healing zones that are very close. When it comes to D, only this healing zone is very close. So D should be easier to attack despite C being arguably in a much more open area that can be attacked from more sides. But now, as the Russians launch a counter-attack onto B, that diverts a lot of attention away from D and opens a chance for the Ukrainians. Pikes with spikes again, both of them uh, rank 2. We'll see how that goes. They do have um, support of the repeating crosses, but the repeating crosses are now busy dueling each other. And again, XP advantage for uh, the Russian repeating crossbows. And they're also winning because of their infantry help. Because the, uh, the Ukrainian repeating crosses cannot just get close enough, cannot really position themselves well, though. I mean, they can, they just didn't. Um, so there we go. 
Pies to Spies going roughly about equal, but with a slight advantage over the Russians. And rank 3, they just leveled up, so that's going to help them as well with more melee attack and other stats. And the counterattack that the Ukrainians were launching on top of D has already fizzled out. So what they're going to try, maybe they can try rushing the base. At this point in the game, where the Russians are only 800 points away, trying to cap the base really seems like the only way to win for the Ukrainian team. But can they actually do that? They're still under quite a lot of pressure over here on B, and they need B held in order to be even able to start capturing uh, the Russian base. The Russians are just not letting that happen. That XP advantage on their infantry, on their archers, rank 4 already. Some of these are rank 1, some of these are rank 2, but across the board for the Ukrainians, everybody is max rank 2, mostly rank uh, well, yeah, mostly rank 2, some of rank 1. Not a single rank 3 really, and definitely not rank 4. So base capture is still going through, but it is very, very slow. And it's very very easy to stop and really that skipper cover is just doing all the work it needs they don't even need to bother with sending anything else uh, so the russians are in complete control more now ukrainian units being sent over to the base the folksmen kind of I think charge themselves the folksmen are very fast the cavalry obviously as well they are being sent over to the base trying to make it a little bit faster the healing zone is now being denied by the ukrainian swords so they are trying to capture the base, but are they committing enough? Cavalry and infantry has respawned over here, so the unit of cavalry can be sent over to be to uh, sorry to the base respawn. But now the Russians are retreating and recalling more units. Triple blob of infantry has just recalled. Now it is going to take care of that uh, of those units that are trying to deny. Rear cavalry charge. I mean. Mostly missed, so it didn't really do that much, but reflank flank has been applied. Warcry will be enough to route this unit if the reflank flank can be held. And the termination is being used. Uh, reflank flank is actually... Is it dropping? No, it is not dropping. Now it dropped. I mean, the player right, uh, right clicked away, most likely. That's how it works. I mean, not always. Flanking mechanics in Arena, don't ask me to explain them. I don't even think the developers themselves know how they work because they can't even fix them as well. But anyway, the Ukrainians are trying to find some charges over here under the arches that they're trying to hold on to B. That shouldn't be that problem, they do have the healing zone and a lot of infantry pouring out, but Russians are only 300 points away and with 3.3 points per second, that means the victory is only less than two minutes away for them. The base is being captured by two Ukrainian units, but more and more Russians are coming back and that is simply not enough to capture the base in time. It has only gone about 25% through, but nowhere near close. The Ukrainians trying to attack C, also not really getting anywhere. The duel between European crossers is going to repeat again, haha, <laughs> but it's bad. The Russians again have the XP advantage, which to be honest in the repeating crossbow duel doesn't mean that much, but sometimes one or two uh, damage more actually makes a difference and when it's two ranks of a difference that may actually be a little bit more than just AP damage that goes through there in the end it's just one rank I don't think it really matters then again I don't really know I'm a ranged main what do you expect me to know how the range duels work what are the actual damage numbers no I just play I just right click and it somehow works <laughs> but well the Russians are going to hold on to all their points, the Ukrainians are going to hold on to all their points as well, but after the early game has played out, after uh, the Ukrainians captured B and after the Russians captured C and D, well, battle outcome has pretty much been decided. The Ukrainians did have some openings, but failed to use them, failed to capitalize on them. I mean, D was very, very close. To being recapped but ultimately the Russians prevailed and those were like the small differences that actually you know are secured by the skill of the players so huge props here to the Russian team for having players skilled enough to understand the game well enough but no they all they need to do is get over the point and that's all it takes to win and well and so Russia leads 1-0 in the final 
Ukrainians definitely put up a violent fight and we'll see what they can do in game 2. I'll see you there. In the meantime, you can help us bring Total War back to the West. You already know what to do to achieve that. And until then, I'll see you on Arena's Battlefields, Commanders.